Welcome to Electron News Bytes, our show dedicated to updates from the world of electronics and semiconductors. I'm your host, Stuart Cording, the electronics reporter. In this month's show, I'll be looking at an ultra low power sub threshold microcontroller for medical applications, discovering how AI is improving sort algorithms, checking out a new power supply designed for electric vehicle battery testing learning about a new FRAM for vehicle black boxes, and exploring some mezzanine connectors for stackable boards. However, if you're in a hurry, use the description below this video or podcast to jump straight to the topics that interest you. Otherwise, let's get started. There are plenty of low power microcontrollers on the market, but there's always a trade-off between active and inactive modes. Ambic implements low power with their spot technology, operating the transistors of their devices sub-threshold. They've just launched their Apollo 4 Lite and Apollo 4 Blue Lite ultra-low power microcontrollers, targeting battery-powered digital health applications. Inside, you'll find an ARM Cortex-M4 core, 2.5D graphics accelerator, audio processing block, plus all the usual serial interfaces and a 12-bit A to D converter. Security features are also included along with 2 megabytes of non-volatile MRAM and 1.4 megabytes of SRAM. The blue light additionally features a Bluetooth low energy 5.1 radio. What's impressive is the 4 microamps per megahertz active current and the 5x5mm BGA package. The device can also be used with Ambic's open source HeartKit AI model, designed for single lead ECG heart monitoring. Tools like ChatGPT have been used to write code or detect errors in coding during program entry. Now Google DeepMind has applied a game playing AI to discover ways of speeding up sorting algorithms. The approach sees the AI playing a game of trying to achieve the same algorithm result, but only winning if it uses fewer assembler instructions. So far, it managed to shave one instruction from a three item sort and four instructions from a five item sorting algorithm. In operation, the algorithm can execute a five item sort up to 70% faster. The research has also highlighted some counterintuitive programming approaches, reminiscent of their AI's winning moves when playing the abstract strategy board game Go. With the massive growth in electric vehicles, developers require new test and measurement equipment tuned to the specific needs of these applications. Fresh on the test bench for those working on vehicle batteries of 600 volts or more are the 5 kilowatt TDK Lambda Gensys Plus. These are high power density programmable power supplies. Two models are on offer covering 0 to 1000 volts at up to 5 amps and 0 to 1500 volts at up to 3.4 amps. The units integrate digital signal processing and next generation ferrite components to obtain efficiencies of up to 92%. This helps limit internal heat generation at the higher power rating without compromising reliability. The One U rack units feature an LCD and simple user interface and support arbitrary waveform test profiles of up to 100 steps. For automated testing, users can control the Genesis Plus via LXI, USB or RS-232. This episode is sponsored by TME. Products for makers and hobbyists are a solid and growing segment of the TME product portfolio. The most popular are Arduino boards, ranging from the iconic Uno Rev3 through to the MKR and Nano series, up to the Portenta boards focused on the needs of professional developers. Arduino's latest addition to the lineup, the Uno Rev4 Minima and Uno Rev4 Wi-Fi, can also be ordered directly from the website at tme.eu.
You've heard of black boxes for airplanes, but did you know that from July 2024, all new vehicles in the European Union need one too? Known as an Event Data Recorder or EDR and installed in the airbag unit, it records 5 seconds prior and 300 milliseconds after a crash. To ensure that the data is reliably recorded, Infineon has launched a new 1 megabit FRAM. Ferroelectric RAM is a very reliable, non-volatile memory technology that offers faster writes than flash memory at a lower write voltage. It can also be overwritten millions of times more often than flash, making it ideal for data logging applications. Infineon's newest Exelon FRAM targets EDR applications by being AECQ100 Grade 1 qualified and supporting an extended minus 40 to plus 125 Celsius temperature range. Read write speeds of 50 MHz are possible over SPI, or 108 MHz in quad SPI mode. And with an endurance of 10 trillion read write cycles, you can be sure your data is safe. If you're stacking boards in your application and are looking to update your connectors, take a look at Harwin's Compact Archer Mezzanine Connector Series. Part of the BBI connector range targeting dependable connectivity, each pin can handle up to half an amp of current and data transfer speeds of up to 16 gigabits per second for the Archer.5 family and 24 gigabits per second for the Archer.8 family. The connectors feature phosphor bronze contacts and are easy to blind mate thanks to connector polarization and a shrouded housing that protects the contacts. Pin counts include 30, 40, 80 and 100 pins with the Archer.8 family additionally supporting 60 and 120 pin options. Wireless technologies are on a continuous path of advancement. No sooner do you have 5G in your pocket or Wi-Fi 6 in your home, 6G and Wi-Fi 7 are already being developed in the lab. Supporting these advancements are devices like the new Apollo MXFE from Analog Devices, a software-defined direct RF sampling wideband mixed signal front end. The device offers four 12-bit RF ADCs with sampling rates of up to 20 giga samples per second, four RF DACs with sampling rates of up to 28 giga samples per second, and an RF input bandwidth from DC to 18 gigahertz, reaching all the way into the CAR-U band. In addition, there are a host of signal processing features, including FFTs and FIR filters using the on-chip DSP and sample rate converters. Complementing this new device are a host of other analog devices chips needed for the RF ecosystem, including PLL and VCO synthesizers, power regulations, regulators, precision synchronizers, and amplifiers. Classic electromechanical relays provide us with a component for switching high voltages and currents that are isolated from the low voltage circuit controlling it. But they have their challenges. You'll need to deal with the back EMF of the coil, their contacts can close under vibration and shock, and the current drawn by the coil can be pretty high. On top, they tend to be quite bulky. Devices like Toshiba's new TLP3476S, a photo relay, can be a good alternative, squeezed into an S Vison 4T package that is just 2 by 1.45 millimeters and 1.3 millimeters high. It switches 50% faster than their previous generation photo relays, turning on within 25 milliseconds. It offers an isolation voltage of 500 volts and switches up to 48 volts and 400 milliamps. The photo relays are well suited to automated test equipment, probe cards, and measurement instruments. Electronics and software are rapidly replacing spark plugs and timing belts in the world of automotive. In fact, cars are essentially becoming a computer on wheels. 
executing the decision-making software are hefty multi-core SOCs like NXP's S32Z and E processors that we've covered on Engineering Insights during our visit to Embedded World. Helping engineers get the software right is Tasking, who have just launched their VX toolset version 7, a powerful Eclipse-based C and C++ compiler, assembler, and linker. Safety certified to, amongst others, ISO 26262 up to ACLD, it integrates seamlessly with the Blue Box hardware for real-time debug and trace and WinIDEA development environment, both of which come from their recent acquisition of iSystem. Wide band gap devices like silicon carbide are growing in importance as manufacturers leverage their low on resistance and higher switching frequencies to build efficient and robust power converters. This touches applications from power supplies and motor inverters to electric vehicle chargers and solar inverters. Highlighting the importance of this technology is the recent long-term supply partnership signed between Vitesco Technologies and Rome. The two companies have already had a partnership in place since 2020 to develop SICK devices. This new agreement foresees a billion dollars of volume between 2024 and 2030, with Fitesco using Rome SICK chips integrated in their advanced inverters. Automotive applications such as the drivetrain and charging are driving the demand for the efficiencies SICK offers, especially as batteries move from 400 to 800 volts. So that wraps it up for this month's episode of News Bytes. If you'd like to learn more about the technologies highlighted, check out the accompanying description and links. Should you have a news update you'd like to share, please drop me a line to tell me more. You'll find my contact details on the Elector website. Or if you prefer, con connect with me, Stuart Gordon, on LinkedIn or follow me on Twitter. While you're here, please like, subscribe to Elector TV Industry on YouTube, or give us a rating on whatever podcast platform you are listening to us on. Thanks for joining, and hopefully we'll see you on Elector News Bites next time.